Hey, welcome to Legal Listening, where audio obiter is our thing. We're Carly and Zach, and we're so glad you're here with us today. Today we're bringing you a special bonus episode, brought to you in collaboration with the folks over at the Legal Writers Collective. Go on and check them out on our website or at legalwriterscollective.com. Hope you enjoy. Hi there. Welcome to Legal Listening, where audio obiter is our thing. My name's Zach, and today I'll be reading a short Ontario Court of Appeal decision, The Queen in Pascal. Before I begin this decision, I would like to offer a content warning to our listeners. This particular case deals with sexual assault causing bodily harm. Viewer discretion is advised. Court of Appeal for Ontario, between Her Majesty the Queen and Stuart Pascal. Heard September 11th and 12th, 2019. On appeal from the conviction entered on January 8th, 2009, and the sentence imposed on June 11th, 2010, by Justice Terence A. Platana of the Superior Court of Justice, with reasons reported at 2010 ONSC 3187. After a trial before a judge of the Superior Court of Justice sitting without a jury, the appellant was convicted of sexual assault causing bodily harm. He also pleaded guilty to two counts of failure to comply with an undertaking. The Crown instituted dangerous offender proceedings. The trial judge found the appellant had to be a dangerous offender and imposed to an indeterminate sentence. The appellant appealed his conviction of sexual assault causing bodily harm. He also appealed the decision that he was a dangerous offender and the sentence of detention in a penitentiary for an indeterminate period imposed as a result of that finding. He did not appeal his conviction of failure to comply with an undertaking. On May 6, 2020, the court allowed the appellant's conviction appeal and ordered a new trial. As a result of our decision to quash the conviction and order a new trial on the count of sexual assault causing bodily harm, there remain no conviction of a serious personal injury offense upon which the DO, or dangerous offender, designation could be grounded. In our view, setting aside the conviction of the predicate offense rendered it unnecessary for us to consider the DO finding and sentence. Thus, we did not set aside that finding or that sentence. The trial judge grounded his finding that the appellant was a DO and imposed the sentence of detention and a penitentiary for an indeterminate period not only on the basis of the conviction of sexual assault causing bodily harm, but also on the basis of the convictions of failure to comply with an undertaking. Failure to comply with an undertaking is not a serious personal injury offense. It cannot serve as a predicate offense for finding that an accused is a DO, nor can it be a lawful basis upon which to impose an indeterminate sentence. To the extent the sentence imposed was made applicable to the convictions of failure to comply with an undertaking, the sentence was unlawful. Discrete sentences should have been imposed for the convictions on those counts to be served concurrently with the indeterminate sentence. Counsel on both sides ask that we rectify the situation by setting aside the dangerous offender finding on the counts of failure to comply with an undertaking and substitute a sentence of 30 days on each count, the sentences to be served concurrently with each other and any sentence the appellant may now be serving. In our view, when we quash the conviction of sexual assault causing bodily harm, the DO finding and sentence imposed as a consequence dissolved. The convictions of failure to comply with an undertaking remained, as did the overarching appeal from sentence. The existence of that appeal provides us with the necessary authority to implement the agreement of the parties. For these reasons, we set aside the DO finding and sentence of indeterminate detention imposed as a result. The indeterminate sentence was also imposed on the convictions of failure to comply with an undertaking. That sentence was not lawful. We substitute a sentence of imprisonment for 30 days on each count of failure to comply with an undertaking. The sentences are to be served concurrently with one another in any sentence to which the appellant is now subject. Legal Listening is founded by Zach Battiston and Carly Lyons. Hosted by Zach Battiston, Carly Lyons, and you, our listeners. Executive produced by Zach Battiston, Carly Lyons, and Anthony Rademile. Audio engineering by Anthony Rademile. Graphic design by Julie Lundy at julielundyart.com. Music by Matt Rademile at radandkel.com. 
We're always open to ideas, suggestions, and of course, guest readers. Check us out at Legal Listening on Twitter and at LegalListening.com. We'll talk to you next time.